This is the Cloud Boom Strike LS. The upper is made by a machine that sprays on the upper, cures it with UV light, and then inkjet prints on the color. The entire process takes only three minutes, and to see it in person is remarkable. But is this a shoe you can actually run in? It's time to pull on the Cloud Boom Strike LS and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews running shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys all about the On Cloud Boom Strike LS. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that On sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for these shoes. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the On Cloud Boom Strike Light Spray. And let's start with the specs. We got 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop giving us 35 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this shoe, as far as the midsole goes, there's two components. There's Helion HF, that's on Super Foam. It is a bio-based PBAX material that uses at least 40% bio-based materials. I believe it is the same compound that we see in the non-light spray version of the Cloud Boom Strike. Now, something to keep in mind about these two shoes is that other than the differences in the upper, there are some significant differences in the midsoles of these shoes, even though they do share a midsole foam compound. One of the things that you'll know if you look at them kind of carefully is that there are four clouds or those holes in the midsole that On is known for in the Cloud Boom Strike LS, and there's only three in the midsole of the Cloud Boom Strike. And the other thing to keep in mind is that these clouds are in a different position, both vertically in the stack of the shoe and forward to back in terms of position of the shoe. The clouds in the Cloud Boom Strike are in the heel. There's three of them here, and they're below the main portion of foam that runs the length of the shoe. In the Cloud Boom Strike LS, we have four clouds that run along the side of the shoe. They don't go all the way through like a lot of clouds do in different on shoes, but they're also kind of in the middle layer of the shoe here, which is something that I had wished that the regular on cloud boob strike had done because those clouds, although they seem kind of decorative, they actually do have a significant impact in the way that the foam deflects and deforms. Something that is similar though, I believe, between both of those shoes is that they have a carbon fiber speedboard. Now, a speedboard is kind of like a carbon fiber plate, but On uses them in a wide variety of a lot of their shoes, and they're not always made out of carbon when On is talking about speedboards, but for the Cloud Boom Strike and for the Cloud Boom Strike LS, those speedboards are made out of carbon. Now on the outsole of this shoe, we have a pretty standard array of rubber that we see in a lot of racing shoes. We've kind of got like the front third of the shoe covered, basically where you're gonna be pushing off from. And then we have got two little patches of rubber along the heel. Now on the inside of this shoe, there is no strobo board, there's no insole. In fact, we have a setup that I think is pretty similar to what we saw in the Cloud Boom Strike, where they have like a kind of a drop-in insole slash midsole chunk that they put in the shoe. And at least when I asked them about the regular Cloud Boom Strike, On says that they do this so that they can remove the strobel board and remove the need for a separate insole. You're standing directly on that bio-based PBAX. Now, uh, I'm not brave enough to try and remove the insole from the Cloud Boom Strike LS. With the way it's constructed, I feel like it's an integral part of the shoe. It seems more than just glued down. And now the, the main story about this shoe is the upper. I had a chance to go to New York for the pop-up that they had set up there for the New York Marathon and see the machine in action. Uh, I will say that it looks pretty much exactly like what the promo video for light spray machine looks like online. On has put together a really cool video that only takes three minutes to watch from beginning to end about how this 
compound is sprayed onto the shoe very much in a cloudy with a chance of meatballs kind of way, uh, cured and then painted and then kind of they go through the steps. It's not like you do all the spraying, all the curing and then all the painting. It kind of goes back and forth steps at a time depending on what needs to be done with the shoe. Uh, but still, nevertheless, it's a really fast and fascinating process. The one thing that I'll say is when I watch the videos that On puts together, it kind of looks like you could see the stream of the substrate being applied to the shoe. No matter how close I looked at it and the lighting wasn't perfect for trying to depict this, I couldn't see that spray. It just kind of looked like a spray on wet material was being applied to the shoe and then as you kind of like step back and like figuratively zoomed out, you could see that like material was being added onto it. And then every once in a while, they had to like run it under a brush to kind of smooth everything that had been sprayed onto the shoe. Then they would cure it and then they would add some more and then do a little bit of painting and kind of repeat all those processes until you were all done. And the result is a very lightweight material that I believe is made out of TPU. I'm still waiting for confirmation from on. I'll update either in the description or in a comment below if I ever get a follow-up confirmation on that, but based on some of the stickers and labels that they had to put inside this shoe to prepare it for mass production and for sale, uh, I believe that the upper is made out of TPU. And uh, despite what you might think, it's actually pretty robust. I mean, you can really kind of yank on it quite a bit and it will stretch a little. And the way that they told me to try this on when I had a chance to try it on in New York was to kind of like stretch it a bit and be aggressive with it. So that way you can open up the the opening by the ankle to get your foot inside and then kind of use your fingers as shoehorns to let your foot get inside. And then once your foot's in it, it all kind of like goes back and morphs back into its original position. And some of the sensations that I'll say that I feel is that it feels a lot less snug than I thought I would. It's certainly snug because there's no laces on this thing. Uh, but I really thought that it was gonna crunch and almost like vacuum seal in all my toes. I didn't get that at all. But I am getting like pressure across the, like, the widest part of my foot. I feel like it's, um, if I could use my hand as an example, if these are the pads of my feet, like right here at the ends of the pads of my feet, that's where I feel feel a little bit of tension and I feel some tightness on the shoe, but otherwise it's really comfortable and it doesn't really feel like it's all that different at all, which is kind of what I want out of a lot of technology. I don't want it to really feel all that different. I just want it to work. And this upper definitely works for me. The other thing that I was worried about is that kind of like this edge uh, looks kind of unfinished and based on a lot of kind of knit shoes, which is the closest thing that I was kind of mentally comparing it to, anytime there are these unfinished edges, and this goes high, it's kind of like a mid top. Uh, I was worried that this was gonna cut into my skin and I didn't have any problems with that at all. My low cut socks, didn't always come up over the edge of the light spray material. And even though there was a lot of rubbing against my ankle, none of it ever caused any irritation, uh, much less any chafing. So that was a real surprise as far as the upper goes. And then when you're touching the inside of it, it's really smooth, almost creepy smooth, kind of like a synthetic leather, fake skin kind of texture on the inside. It's really quite amazing. Now, altogether, On says that this shoe comes in at 170 grams, and that is just incredibly light. But the size of shoe that they're using for that 170 gram figure is an 8.5 in US men's, which is smaller than a reference size. I do happen to be reference size and a US men's size nine for me in this pair of shoes on my scales came in at 188 grams, which is still incredibly light because it's a mere 6.6 .6 ounces, making it one of the lightest shoes on the market today. Now that we've talked about what this shoe's like on paper, let's talk about what it's like on the road. I'm really enjoying the tweaks to the midsole experience that we have in the Cloud Boom Strike LS. I feel like there's more cushion and softness in this shoe, but it's still exceptionally good at fast running. 
when I'm running VO2 max type efforts or faster, getting all the way up to mile race pace, I feel like there is an incredible smoothness to the entire experience, almost as if the shoe itself is carving the asphalt that I'm running along. And it just really works well for what I want to be as powerful and as quick of a turnover as my legs will allow me to produce. But then when I dial it back to some of the more intended effort levels of the shoe when I'm running threshold level or towards marathon effort pace, uh, and I'm landing a little bit more in the midfoot, I feel a little bit more of the kind of technology of the shoe. I'm feeling the clouds a little bit more because I'm landing more midfoot and I'm feeling a little bit more of the interaction. I guess there's more time for my body to sense the interaction between the foam and the carbon fiber plate and, and how all those things are interacting with my stride and my push off. And I feel like it's all working in a really nice and powerful way. Now on marathon shoes have a tendency for me to be a little bit firmer than I'd like. And I still think that that applies to this shoe here. And I guess to kind of translate the experience into something that I think a lot of you will have tried before is, I think that kind of what I'm feeling in the Cloud Boom Strike LS reminds me a lot of like, the Adios Pro 1, like the Light Strike Pro that was in that shoe um, that was a little bit on the firm side, but ultimately had a good amount of cushion and had a really great amount of pop and give you a really powerful push off and stride sensation. I feel like I'm getting a lot of those similar kinds of feelings in the On Cloud Boom Strike Light Spray. And I, I know that a lot of you guys have probably come here wanting to hear all about this upper and, and have me go into exquisite detail about like how this is different from a traditional running experience. But I think it's like running in a, a shoe that has a really good knit or otherwise minimal upper, but it's doing it in a way that's extremely lightweight. There's no like potential problems that I'm really foreseeing with this so far. I, it fit really well for me. I took it on a really tight turns and tangents and I, I didn't feel Feel like I was sliding around. I feel like a lot of the concerns that people have with knit uppers are kind of being recycled and re-asked for this shoe, but the material is both strong and flexible. It's both stretchy, but also retains its shape at, at the same time. I'm not really sure chemically, scientifically, how all those things can go together, but they all seem to be going together really well in this shoe. I will be keeping an eye on for a long-term usage uh, if the upper is going to stretch and mold to my foot and kind of the barometer that I'll be comparing it against is not whether it stretches even a little bit or not, but does it stretch more than say a traditional racing upper? Does it stretch or deform more than a knit upper? And how much of that deformation is happening relative to the life expectancy of this midsole foot? So I don't need this upper to last like 300 miles like I would for a daily training upper. I just need it to be able to last as long as the racing foam is going to be good. And that's something that I'll definitely be keeping an eye on. But for those of you that are still like really concerned about like how fragile uh, this material might be, just know that they are putting this into some racing spike prototypes. So they feel like it's strong enough to handle the even greater pressures and forces that would have from track athletes. So I feel like that gives you a good indication of how resilient and strong that on thinks that these materials are, and I'm tending to agree with them, at least in my testing of this shoe so far. I'm not that concerned about the longevity of this upper. Now, before we wrap up the video, let's take a moment and step back and see where the Cloud Boom Strike LS fits within the broader on lineup, especially now that they have a multiple marathon race product. And then I'll also kind of talk about some of the daily training product that I especially like coming from on. Now, On has a lot of different types of shoes that are for different types of experiences. Uh, the ones that I tend to like are the ones that use their new shape of clouds, the Cloud Tech Phase. Uh, clouds, again, are these holes that On puts into their shoes. And the Cloud Tech Phase are the ones that are not as rounded. They're more kind of triangular and the shape tends to change depending on where in the shoe that they are. And I think a really great example of this technology working well or this approach working well is in the Cloud Surfer. I think it's a really nice,
nice, spongy, comfy daily trainer that's really comfortable for easy miles and even a lot of recovery miles as well. And then the other shoe that I would look to would be the On Cloud Eclipse. This is a little bit taller of a shoe and it can be used as a recovery shoe and I like using it for that. But I also feel like it works really well as kind of a good long run shoe, something that has some up-tempo miles in it. Maybe you're getting up to marathon pace and maybe you've got some easy miles and a couple of pace changes between easy and marathon. And I feel like this shoe is really great for that. And again, it's using that on cloud tech phase, the new kind of cloud from on. And these would kind of be my daily training, the two shoes that I would use in the on lineup rotation. And then for anything faster than what these shoes could really give me, or if I had a really long workout, uh, a long run with a lot of marathon miles in it and a lot of pace changes in it, then that's when I'm going to reach for the race product. And we'll put these aside for now because here's where I think it gets a little bit complicated. Now, on currently has three different shoes shoes in the lineup uh, that are all considered marathon product and I've asked on about it and none of these are going to be replacing each other. I think they're all going to coexist in the on lineup at the same time going forward. For how much for, more forward, I'm not really sure. On didn't really say, but at least for now, these are all going to exist in the product lineup at the same time. And the first one that I'll talk about is the one that kind of came out first. And this is the Cloud Boom Echo 3. Now the Cloud Boom Echo used to be the only played carbon plated race shoe in the lineup. And this is one where I feel like you know, on says that it's a marathon shoe, but I really feel like it's a 5K, 10K racer. It's a much lower stack height. It's a much firmer experience. Um, and it's a very snappy type of shoe. It doesn't have the kind of like compression, decompression that I'm looking for in something that I'm gonna be running in for about three hours at a time. I think On explained it as a shoe that's really designed for people that want to run really fast and have a lot of ground feel which I think is a nice way of saying it's firm. And then there is the Cloud Boom Strike, which came out uh, shortly after that in the year. Uh, a lot of people thought that this is the same shoe that Helen O'Beary was racing in, but it's it turns out it's quite different and the, the Light Spray is really the, the shoe that's closest to what she's been racing in. But this is a shoe that I feel like kind of adds some stack height add some softness to the experience as well. I think the plate position gets tweaked a little bit in this shoe too, uh, but you're feeling a lot more of kind of like super foams uh, in the Cloud Boom Strike. And then I think like the softest and I think most forgiving, and I think also the most exciting at the same time shoe of the three is the Cloud Boom Strike LS. Again, it's got the four clouds higher up in the stack, so it's closer to your foot, uh, but also I feel like the combination of the, the featherweight upper and also the midsole, which feels like it might be a little bit lighter and airier of a midsole, if you ask me, um, it makes for just a really fantastic experience. And so these are kind of three different but coexisting options that are available for people that really want to race in on shoes. I definitely have a favorite in here, but depending on kind of the level of firmness or ground feel that you're looking for in your race product, there is an option for you at on. Now let's wrap up the video by going over the buying guide and we'll also talk about some alternatives that you'll want to consider if you're interested in the Cloud Boom Strike LS. I think that the On Cloud Boom Strike LS is the best marathon shoe that On has ever made. It's fast, it's incredibly lightweight, it's flexible. I hope that On continues in this direction of making marathon shoes that are more runnable to a wider array of both elite and non-elite runners. But for now, at a retail price of $330 for the Cloud Boom Strike LS, I'm not sure that this is a shoe that I'm going to be able to recommend to anyone, except for the most avid shoe nerds and the most fervent shoe collectors. Let's take a look at some other shoes that are on the marketplace right now that you might want to consider instead.
So the first thing that I will take a look at is another shoe that I think is definitely a little bit too expensive, but it's the closest experience that you're going to be able to get. And that's the shoe that we've already talked about quite a bit today. That's the On Cloud Boom Strike. And remember, this isn't just a difference in uppers. There's a difference in midsole design across both of these shoes that I think makes a pretty big difference. I think that for those of you who like a little bit less cushion, but a little bit more responsiveness out of your race day shoes, I feel like this is the shoe that you're actually going to really prefer. Uh, but for me, I feel like it's on that borderline of like, I think I could take it for the marathon distance, but I'm not sure. Uh, I definitely personally would prefer the light spray version of this shoe. That being said, the upper here is really comfortable. It's still really lightweight. It does come in at almost an ounce heavier though, because it's using traditional racing upper materials. But uh, I feel like you're getting a lot of similar experiences. And this shoe comes in at a, I guess it's a more reasonable $280. Now, the other shoe that I think we should take a look at is a lot more reasonably priced, and that's from Adidas, and that's the Adios Pro 3, and I specifically am gonna highlight the three and not the four, which will be coming out later in 2025. Uh, and the reason why I specifically wanna talk about the three is because I feel like this version of a Light Strike Pro is a foam that feels more similar to the foam that's in the on Cloud Boom Strike Light Spray. And I feel like there is a responsive to it. It's definitely feels fast and you're getting a lot of bounce back from the foam. Uh, and I feel like there's a little bit of firmness to it as well. It's not uncomfortable. It's not hard by any means, uh, but it's a little bit more firm than it would be say cushioned. And so there is a little bit less of the compression, but there's a really quick and satisfying decompression that comes with both of these shoes. Now the Adios Pro 3 is even heavier still compared to the Cloud Boom Strike LS and the Cloud Boom Strike, but it is readily available. It's pretty easy to buy even right now, and it comes in at a retail of $250, so $80 cheaper than the Light Spray. So those are my thoughts on the on Cloud Boom Strike LS. It's definitely a shoe I like more than I thought I would, and I do think it is the best marathon shoe that On has put out. Hopefully this is a technology that can become a little bit more affordable and a little bit more producible, so that way they can make it in inventory numbers where more of you can try this out. Uh, I don't think it's a must-have technology, but it is certainly very interesting to try, and for you shoe nerds out there, you're gonna wanna at least find a place to be able to try it on and get a chance to experience it hopefully you'll get a chance to do just that. If you have any other questions about the Cloud Boom Strike LS or any of the shoes that I talked about today, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream I do Mondays and Thursdays over on the Kafuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?